know what? Never bothered to settle with that for the child. Mm-hmm. You know, as I said before, this is, to me, is the key element. Um, you know, uh, I was thinking as you were, you were making the statement is, you know, that s- the kids are going to try to find this somewhere. Gangs, uh, you know, um, hip hop, mm-hmm. you know, rock stars, mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. They're going to try to find it. You know, when, if, when in effect, if <coughs> really what they're looking for is only what a father can provide for them. And, uh, you know, if you don't have this, you don't know that, so you look in all these other arenas and uh, you don't find it there either. And like you say, you, you become a star and you spend the rest of your life hiding, you know, which is crazy. The thing that I, I thought was interesting from some of my psychology class is how the both genders, you know, males and females, sons and daughters, develop their identity, particularly from their father. Yes. One would think that that uh, young girls would identify with their mother, and they do, but there's something about the relationship they have with their father that settles for them who they are, and certainly that's true for boys, so it's, it's, it's absolutely important for men to be fathers and to be that for the children. And in these instances where your natural father is not around, that there are men who are willing to do it and and help these children so that, you know, you you mentioned homosexuality earlier, that their uh, identity is shaped in a good way, with regard to sexual identity, and their identity in, in all facets is well shaped. Well, as far as being a, being a spiritual father, uh, if you know if a man is um, you know on the track to becoming mature, he needs to have a spiritual father, or he never makes it all the way. You know, there's always something lacking in his um, in his character or his ability to really become mature enough to be confident in what he's doing. You know, the other thing that that, that um, took place with me is that, uh, you know, when I was fortunate enough to find a spiritual father, you know, his affirmation did something spiritually with me. Uh, my confidence level went up, way up. And uh, not only that, but the, it just seems like the pleasure of God came on my efforts to be a father. Uh, you know, these, these things were just, to my way of thinking, they were they were noticeably different. That you know, I always had the respect of a number of men, even the number of men that I'm working with, still working with. Uh, you know, there was a respect, but once I 
came into that place of having a spiritual father. And this thing just went up exponentially. And, uh, and all I can say is that having that spiritual father seems to have done that for me. And I think it does it for any man. The, the, the point of confidence is key. The scripture says, don't cast away the confidence because it has great recompense of reward. Um, having confidence is a large part of the battle. It's not arrogance. It's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, some sort of made-up faith. It's a real sense that you know who you are and you know that God will communicate to you everything that you need to know. Um, <clears throat> I, I remember years ago uh, a brother who didn't grow up with his father. And I kept hearing from the Lord things to tell him about his children, how he was going to be a great father. I told him a number of times. And it's funny, he has all boys. <laughs> but it, it, it was God's goodness to assure him that even though that he didn't have you know, a, this natural representative, that God was going to stand behind him and, and infuse him with confidence that, that you could do this well. And, you know, this man since, of course, has, you know, understood the thing about having spiritual fathers. But certainly, you know, if you have some issues about whether you're prepared for the job, be it, be it being a natural parent or one who cares for others than your own children, if you have a relationship with your natural father or a spiritual father, that'll solve the issue. Yeah, and I think that, you know, what Ernest did there in just speaking speaking the word of truth to this brother is, is really important. Uh, you know, that, that, uh, that somebody would see value in this. Somebody would, uh, instead of pointing out our, uh, our failures or, you know, Hey, brother, you can't make this because you haven't had a father. <laughs> you know, everybody knows that uh, kind of stuff. But, you know, uh, which, which you did, Ernest, is you took the biblical perspective on this thing and you took the, you know, the word of God and you spoke life into this man and you showed him, you know, what, what would happen in a, in, in a godly situation. And he, he received it. And sure enough, it happened. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 